So I'd like to share with you one of my favorite little oddities in naming of muscle tissues in our body. So whether we're in the arm or the leg, when we're learning anatomy, we learn about the biceps, the two-headed muscle, the two-headed muscle of the arm, the biceps brachii, and the two-headed muscle of the leg, the biceps femoris. So in either the arm or the leg, we actually have a triplet of muscle tissues that are joined together to form what's really an N-like structure, like an, shaped like an N. So in the leg, we have our N right here, semitendinosus, long head of the biceps femoris, short head of the biceps femoris. There's our N-shaped muscle of the leg. Here, our N-shaped muscle of the arm is the coracobrachialis, the short head of the biceps brachii, and the long head of the biceps brachii. Now, the tissues are analogous. They match, but their names don't match. Different tissues are paired to become the biceps in the arm than in the leg. So we have an N shape in both, but in the leg we pair the shorter red colored tissue here, uh, which is the short head of the biceps femoris and the long head of the biceps femoris. But over here, so we call this the biceps femoris, this pairing of this short muscle and this long muscle tissue here, and they do share a common tendon. Over here, there's a common tendon shared also between the shorter muscle of the triplet, the coracobrachialis, and the short head of the biceps brachii. But we don't call this pairing the biceps in the arm. Rather, we call this pairing the biceps in the arm. So this would be the short head of the biceps brachii and the long head of the biceps brachii. But that pairing matches over here, but we don't call this pairing the biceps femoris. We call this semitendinosus, and we call this the long head of the biceps femoris, but the long head of the biceps femoris actually is the match to the short head of the biceps brachii. And the long head of the biceps brachii is actually the tissue match to the semitendinosus muscle, and the short head of the biceps femoris actually matches coracobrachialis. So my point is that we have the exact same tissue pattern in the arm and the leg, but in the arm we call this pairing the biceps, and in the leg we call this pairing the biceps. So we could call this the biceps brachii, but we don't. <laughs> so we call this the biceps brachii, and it doesn't match. It, the tissues match, but the names don't match for the matching tissues. So I prefer to call either grouping of tissues the nuoid muscle, meaning shaped like an N. Okay, so nu is the Greek letter for N. So like an N, like an N. So the nuoid brachii and the nuoid femoris is a way to just remember for fun that we have actually triplets of muscle groupings and our anatomical custom is to call this the biceps brachii and this the biceps femoris. So it's all mapped out here. It's almost like a brain puzzle and yet it's a nice way to learn the tissues, what's actually in our bodies because as it turns out, the semitendinosus and the short, the, I'm sorry, the long head of the biceps femoris are actually just as joined together as the so-called biceps are. And similarly, the coracobrachialis and the short head are just as joined together as what we call the biceps uh, brachii. So we have an analogous set of tissues in our arm and in our leg. They're both shaped like an N. And for some reason, way back when, we decided to call this the biceps in the leg and this the biceps in the arm when 
the tissues could just as easily be reversed. So that's the, my remapping of the biceps to help you better understand both the actual tissue relationships, but also the fact that our language that we assign to tissues in the body are customs and not necessarily anchored in the reality of the tissues. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.